Hey everybody, uh, I'm Finn McKenty. I'm the head of the Music and Audio channel here on Creative Live. For those of you who are new to Creative Live, we are uh, the world's leading online classroom where you can learn how to make music. So if you want to write, record, produce your own music, um, this is the place to do it, to learn how to do it. Uh, I'm here today with uh, Crown the Empire to talk about the class they're doing, the behind the scenes class they're doing with our friends over at Band Happy this year, every day, every single day on the Vans Warped Tour. So, um, guess could you guys just uh, quickly introduce yourselves for anybody who may not know who you are? Yeah, we are Crown the Empire. <laughs> 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 We're Crown the Empire. I'm Ben. I'm Ben. Dave. I'm Dave. He sings. He plays guitar. I'm Brent. I play drums. I'm Andrew. I sing. I'm Hayden. I play bass, and this is Brent, and he plays the guitar. What up? Cool. Well, thanks for joining us. I guess uh, the first question that, that I had is, you know, uh, I always say there's no such thing as an overnight success, but you guys are, are pretty close to that. I mean, I first started hearing your name kind of out of the blue, maybe, I don't know, a year, year and a half, yeah, a year and a half ago, something like that, already playing big shows, kind of doing big things right out of the gate. Can you talk a little bit about the history of the band and how you were able to kind of go big so early? Yeah, it's it's still it's crazy and it's it's still getting crazier at how you know how much reaction we've been getting in like the short short period amount of time. Um, we started in 2010. A couple of us met in high school. Um, wanted to play in a band, uh, played our first show, and decided we wanted to do it, you know, seriously. And um, <clears throat> we finally started getting members. You know, a solid lineup. We met these guys, got them all together, and we've been you know doing everything since. So we've been through like crazy. Uh, since day one, we've always been online. We've done these web chats, like, I don't know, this is probably, what, like, the 50th one we've ever done, <laughs> like, some hundred time. But ever since we were, we even, before we were in a full band, before we had all six of us, we were doing web chats, and um, our YouTube was big, our Facebook was big, our Twitter was big, Instagram was always just a big part of what we were. So um, we, got our, we got ourselves out there that way, and that's, like, think so much quicker than word of mouth. You can tweet something and all your followers see it. Yeah, and that's what we're teaching on this uh, band happy class all summer. Oh yeah, so that was that was my next question. You beat me to it. Uh, you should be you should just interview yourself. Um, so yeah, tell us tell us a little bit about like kind of how you got hooked up with Band Happy. Uh, Matt's a good friend of mine. I love what they're doing. Um, and uh, maybe talk a little bit in depth about what you're going to be teaching every day. Yeah, we heard about it the first time on uh, last year's work tour. It seemed. Uh, Every day, the tent was always crowded with, you know, a, a band member teaching a lesson. You know, it was always something different, and we thought it was really cool. Um, we were really interested. We asked our manager to uh, you know, talk to Matt to figure out how we could be a part of it. And, yeah, we decided this would be, you know, what, what we could teach as, a, as an entire band. Uh, so we decided to go. Yeah, Matt and Periphery are under our same management. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so we, um, Dave and I have done individual lessons in the past before and we heard about the opportunity last year at South by So What we were actually able to do a class very similar to this and it was our first try doing it and we wanted to do something a little bit different. We were we were kind of the first band to come up with the big social media presence. Not many bands have kind of came up that way. I remember just years ago people were passing demo tapes from like homeroom to homeroom and stuff like that. But now it's a completely different ball game. So it's cool to kind of talk about how we did it differently than bands from five to even a couple years ago. Well, you know, that's what I was going to kind of ask you about is uh, I always make fun of the bands that have like, you know, a promo shoot and a manager and this and that before they ever even write a song. Um, you know, because usually they end up going nowhere and it's like, wow, this local band that's going nowhere spent $2,000 and all this stuff. That's hilarious. What a bunch of losers. Uh, <laughs> but like in uh, just uh, taking a look at this uh, cover story you guys did with uh, Alternative Press this month, you know, you said in there that, uh, you know, you kind of did a little bit of the fake it till you make it thing. Um, can you talk about like, I mean, I'm sure people said that was cheesy or that you, I don't know, like that was cheating or something. Like, can you kind of talk a little bit about that? Uh, I mean, it was kind of like, even since day one, like local bands, I was in, we always had like a fake manager. I remember I had a guy his like, name was Ryan Stone, and he was a like, booking agent and our manager. And he it was, was just like a bro. It was just like, <laughs> it sounds awesome. He was like a, yeah. but he was just a complete phantom guy. It was just me and a different email. <laughs> it, was like, you know, it was just, it was easier to ask for a little bit more money through Ryan Stone. Gotcha. 
a little bit easier to demand um, stuff when you get to shows and like asking for um, yeah, please money. pay us <laughs> like, because at that point we're asking for like gas money we were right. asking for like extra money we're asking because like, you have money so we could sleep somewhere tonight and then that kind of turned into um, if our Facebook looked good as opposed to a Facebook of another band that looked okay. I remember we came up in MySpace, and when I, the band approached me to join, their MySpace layout was unbelievable. Like, <laughs> all their, their, their pictures yeah, were up important. there. They, they had a logo. They had all something like, this band's legit. Like, if they have a logo, they must have, <laughs> have like, a lot of stuff going yeah. on. You know? So, I mean, the, the difference was is that we had the same, like, appeal that all these big bands were, but they weren't actively talking to, to fans at all times. But so it made us look like, you know, people, you know, always want to talk to us, but literally all we did was sit at home on that MySpace and talk to as many people as we could yeah. and try to get them, you know, uh, to listen to the music. Yeah, we, did, shot. we didn't have, like, a thousand fans. We had, like, a thousand friends. <laughs> right, right, right. So that eventually turned into fans when we had, like, songs and everything like that. And the personal just interaction with those fans has continued throughout tour to tour. So we see these fans that came out on our first couple club shows that we still know their names and they can't even believe it. And we still like remember the shows they came out to and that personal interaction just got us there. So it kind of keeps us going still. Well, you know, I, I always think it's funny when bands like buy Twitter followers or something, because, you know, you guys are talking about like the, the, the quality of interaction you're having with your fans and how important that is. Well, you can buy a million Twitter followers, but I mean, what's that good for? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All, of our, all of ours are real, right? No, yeah. No. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I know some people that actually have done that, but no, we haven't. No, no we never did that. Keep it real. <laughs> keep it real on the internet. Those followers you buy are actually not doing yeah. They don't even talk to you. You can't talk yeah. to your boss. No, I mean, it's like you, uh, it, because then I, if, if I'm working with someone that has a million Twitter followers, I'm going to expect them to deliver on that. And if, yeah, yeah. if they're tweeting to 999,000 fake people, they're, you know, it's not gonna, they're not going to be able to deliver on, uh, on it. So, um, so you, guys are, you guys are busy. You've got a lot of stuff going on. Why take time out of your day to do a class like this every day? Especially Warp Tour is such a crazy grind. You know, you're getting up at crack of dawn every day to find out what time you're even playing. Why take time out of your day to teach? We figured it's something we were knowledgeable about and somewhere, you know, another way we can go out and talk to our fans. You know, last year we didn't have a specific place we would go every day. Every day we'd have a signing in a different, attend a different booth. And now we have the consistency of going to uh, Responsive by Journeys all summer. So we'll be signing at their table. Um, we, we're not really allowed to sign anywhere else, but, you know, we'll meet fans at our table after the set. And, uh, you know, why not have more interaction on, on an actual subject? Uh, so I, uh, I kind of forgot to mention here that we are taking audience questions uh, at the end of this. So if you, uh, if you scroll down below this video, there's a little chat thing. Click on there, uh, take a look. And, it's like so far away. And, and <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's go over there. Yeah. Just someone go do it. No, like later. Yeah, yeah we're going to that point. It's just a little bit. Okay, cool. okay. We'll do it. <laughs> All right, so all right. All right, I'm so to figure out Scott. <laughs> How many band members? Michael. <laughs> all right, so uh, next question is: uh, So you just finished your new record. Uh, can you talk a little bit about who you did that, who you did it with, and what it was different from the EP, and just kind of talk about the process of recording that? Yeah, um, we uh, we actually went to Long Island, um, New York, to record with Dan Corniff. Um, it went incredibly well. Awesome guy. The songs turned out, you know, exactly how we hoped they would. And then um, we went to Chris Crummett to get it mixed and mastered. I actually just got back a few days ago from working with him. Oh, um, I'm I'm actually doing a class with him on August sixth here on Creative Live. Awesome. So if anybody out there, yeah, yeah I will. He did my favorite record of the year, which is the Issues album. So I was like, I need to get this guy. But anyway, so you went, so Chris mixed and mastered it. That's awesome. I'm sure it sounds fantastic then. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm really, really coming along. We can't wait to put it out. Yeah. Just cleaning up the rough edges right now. There's yeah. a few. It feels like it's never going to happen. But I, I will. I promise. I promise. Yeah, there's so much stuff that goes into making an album that, like, seeing it finished is like, yeah, right. I'll believe it when I buy it. 
Yeah. And just go, go his to album story. cover and live notes and every single song and everything. There's just so much stuff going on with it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, well, how much, uh, you know, uh, I guess working with someone like Chris, you know, he's got a very, like, analog, old-school approach to things. He's not one of these, like, Pro Tools wizards that's going to fake everything. Um, how, how different was that compared to, like, what you've heard from other bands or your previous experience? Like, what, what was different about working with him? Well, I mean, we worked with Joey um, on our last record, and Joey is kind of the opposite. <laughs> right. Of production and sounds go. Um, so we flew over there. Um, as, as far as production for this record, um, me and uh, Brendan Baroni did a lot of it this okay. time. So I kind of sat down and worked with, with Chris on actually making the parts, and then Chris would mix it into the actual song while we were there and kind of figured out how that all worked. And he is very you know, kind of analog, old school based. He actually put his, a couple of our songs through his like, actual like, record um, player. I, I don't know exactly what it is. Tape machine. Tape, yeah, tape machine. Mastering. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, it was really cool, but it was it was really different. But he makes things sound very very real. It's got a real vibe to it. We did a lot of real stuff on this record as well, as far as gang vocals, choirs. Um, we had a real a guy track. A lot of the strings were tracked by Dave Egger, a real person. He did the strings for Viva La Vida and tons of other artists, you know, that are in the mainstream circuit right now. But it, yeah, it was really cool. Really yeah, that's awesome. I, I think, uh, you know, I like the really, like, modern, polished sound. I liked, you know, Joey's stuff when it came out and stuff, but I think, like, kind of the next frontier is being that, like, super tight and polished, but also still sounding real. Um, yeah. And I think that's what Chris is great at. Um, all right, so um, let's say that uh, once upon a time, you know, you were a little kid with a dream. You said, I want to be in a band, and you made it happen. Uh, for any parents watching who are at home that have a kid that's saying the same thing that wants to either be in a band or have a career as an artist or do anything else creative, as people who have succeeded in that, like what would you say to that parent or what would you say if you were the parent and your kid said, I want to be in a band? Ooh. Well, it was like, <laughs> it's always like a kind of like, I want to be in the NBA or I want to be in the NFL. Like growing up, that was kind of how I felt like saying that in school or saying that to my parents but what we're trying to do with this class is show like a business side of things and a really if you really want this to happen there's actual work you can do to make it happen there's 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 marketing there's business there's you figure out your demographic and who you're going to market your songs to and what kind of image you want to have behind your songs and how your merchandise is going to supplement your band and, and vice versa and to be able to see how much goes into it and why these and to be able to, for us to pinpoint why these bands were successful and why these other bands were not and what they did right. And if this band's doing 12 things right, but this band's doing 20 things right yeah. and how they can succeed. Yeah, and it comes from, it, it all comes from, from what, what kind of music you decide to make as a band and the, how you can make it work the best way possible. Like the things you can do, the people that you want to appeal to with, you know, if the substance is there, it's easy, easier to go out and do it, you know. And we want to teach the best way to do that. And you guys were really young. You were probably, like, you were, like, 16 or 17 or something when you started doing this, right? Yeah. I, mean, I turned 16 when we, first, when we recorded our first song and put it out on, uh, on MySpace. It was, it's been crazy, but it doesn't even seem like that long ago, honestly. Yeah. It wasn't. <laughs> it was three or four years. Yeah. And you can use that to your advantage, too, like, how many different bands like get big or at least somewhat big in high school and then just turn into nothing as opposed to getting a little bit of hype in high school and then taking your social media presence and your those just school districts and everything and bringing it out to being the best band in your district to the best band in your county to the best band in your state to the best band in the like in the country you know just there's there are steps you can do to do that it's not just luck it's not just um, a, one good song there's a lot more that goes into it. All right, we got some good uh, audience questions coming in uh, from Fizzy. What band did you look up to before becoming famous? I guess you're famous. <laughs> <laughs> Working on it. Now, honestly, a lot of the bands that we've toured with, we all you know used to listen to. Like it, it was it was three years ago that you know we were, I was a sophomore in high school and we were, you know we're looking up to like we cover band songs. You know we didn't have our own songs at first. Um, Examples like 
We all have different influences, though. So, yeah. I mean, Aiden listens to a lot of different stuff that none of us really listen to. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, Andy listened to bands like System of a Down and My Chemical Romance. And yeah. Ben listened to My Chemical Romance. I listened to bands when I was really little, like Metallica and Green Day and all that kind of stuff. And so, we all have a million different influences that we just kind of combine. Right, most of the yeah. bands that our fans look up to as well are fans. Yeah, fans we're fans probably well. fans of the same bands that our fans look up to. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess you guys aren't really that much older. Um, <laughs> So, question from Guitarist724. I have a question for you guys. Do you get anxious or nervous after you've been off the road without playing a show for a while? And if so, how do you get over that? Like, show withdrawal. Okay, okay on the road, like, the, the last couple of shows, you just, like, you want nothing more than to get away from everyone and, like, just be away for a little bit, like, have some, some space. But we go home for a little bit. We probably have, like, a day or two where we don't talk to each other and, like, we don't have any other friends except for us, <laughs> so we, we just end up hanging out anyways. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I don't know. It's like, yeah, we do get nervous, but you just practice enough, and then you get confident to where you can at least pull it off. Yeah. And then, but, I mean, the only way to really get past it is just to do it. You know, you're, you're not gonna like really know how it's gonna turn out because things do mess up. Little things happen all the time. So yeah, it's nerve wracking, but you get better every time. You yeah. Know, goes wrong. And when you play, it, once you've been like playing a record for like a few months or a few tours or whatever, it gets easier. So you get more confident with it. It's not as scary. Yeah. Unless well, you're playing new stuff, that's what it's for. Yeah. 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 No, we, right I definitely get anxious sitting in one place. Yeah. For sure. Well, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people want to propose to you, or want me to ask you about your feet. I think that's kind of weird. I don't. I'm not comfortable asking guys about their feet. Um, so I'm gonna ask. Um, I'm going to ask from the Jedi Ash Cash. When can we expect the new album uh, and something other than the middle of Warp Tour? Uh -oh. End of Warped Tour. We can't give a specific answer, oh, otherwise God. we would. <laughs> it's end of Warped Tour now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's the end. We, want, we, we have to ask us. again, it'll be after Warped Tour. <laughs> <laughs> next time they ask, it'll be next year's Warped Tour. And to be completely honest, to be completely honest, we don't even know the exact time. We're, still, we're still finishing up the record right now. So. Yeah. We actually have some stuff to do like right after this chat. I'm, yeah, awesome. I'm about to go sit down on my computer and actually start <laughs> finishing up the song. So yeah, seriously, yeah. all we know is that it comes out this summer, too. So. Gotcha. Yeah. So, You'll be playing <laughs> songs from it on Warped? Definitely, yes. yep. definitely, without a doubt. We've been playing these same songs for over a year now, and yeah. we, we want to put out something new. So we'll, we'll play some new songs for you guys. I mean, if you guys want us to play all the old songs, then you can play them. My 444 asks, what was the worst experience you've had on tour? I'm sure you've been on the road a lot. I'm sure you have some good ones. When our trailer fell off. Trailer. Yeah. <laughs> that was the worst. We were driving down the highway and we get waved down by this 18 wheeler and we pull over and he tells us that our trailer had fallen off and he'd taken out an exit sign on the side of the road. <laughs> Completely took out the highway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we had driven down like a mile too without yeah. realizing it was off. And then so we, we went all the way back around and picked it up. And luckily we had all of our merch in the front of our trailer. So all of our gear, when it hit, it didn't do anything to it. It was kind of cushioned. But um, yeah, that was probably the worst experience having to get a new trailer. And, and it didn't kill show. anybody. It yeah. literally, literally <laughs> hit the we didn't kill movie. anybody, and it didn't break my guitar, you know. Yeah, and the guitar is fine. We so. double check that pitch from now on. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. I think this is a really good question from uh, uh, Melody and Maddie Escamilia. Do you wear your own band shirts? I have I have some strong feelings about this. <laughs> sure he does. He I, does. We do when we work out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's something you can grab from the merch bin that you can work out at, no problem, get dirty. And we wear our own shorts. shorts. We wear a lot of our own shorts because it's like way more convenient than going to buy And we shorts. lose all our shorts. Oh, we lose clothes all the time. Yeah. <laughs> we just go to the merch table and re-up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I think it's I think it's a good look myself. I mean, who likes your band better than you do? You're, you're <laughs> our number one fan, right? We don't really rock into like shows and stuff. But, yeah. Um, yeah, that's more of like a metal thing, wearing your own wearing your own shirt when you're in a metal band. <laughs> yeah. It's like a hit truth. Yeah. It's a hit truth. It's a hit truth thing. <laughs> so, question from uh, Laser Punk, uh, kind of along the same lines, but but maybe in a different angle, is uh, what do you think is the worst, or I should say, hardest part of touring? Because you know, like everybody says, they want to go on a tour. I've been on tour with friends of mine. It is not for me, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> it's lack um, of convenience, I'd say. It's like everything's difficult. It's harder to take a shower. It's harder to find places to, to eat. To, you to know, poop even. Yeah, even yeah. if you have to go poop. The yeah. venue will open at a certain time, and you can't go in anywhere. And like a lot of these places where the venues are, the clubs that we've been playing lately have been like 
in the middle of a city and like there's like office buildings all around. There's nowhere to go. You just go on a journey. And it's like, you want. And it's like eleven dudes sharing the tiniest little kitchen you could imagine. So you can't fit a lot of your own food in there. So you can't <laughs> have like just snacks all the time and things yeah. like that. So that that's difficult too. It's just it's definitely it's, a lot it's not very convenient. Yeah. yeah. Another good question uh, from Laserpunk. What kind of things do fans do to make you smile? Sing with us. Sing with us all around stage. Like if, if there's a part where I, you know, I'm just like, let's just, let's see if they can, if they'll sing back. We I know, know, I, I know, know that's Rocky too. Yeah, 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 yeah that's, that's what I'm saying. So we know who our fans are. I know that's Rocky. Laserpunk is definitely. Yeah, Laserpunk is Rocky. She's a good friend of mine. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, but we like when we bring, bring us stuff too. I mean, who doesn't want love free that. stuff? Yeah, we get free food all the time. <laughs> I mean, it's awesome. We got a sombrero once. And I got proteins. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really cool. Yeah, that's always fun. Alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, don't bring alcohol unless you're over 21 because that's yeah. illegal. Yeah, you're over 21. Yeah, you're over 21. Yeah, guys. Uh, man, these questions are coming in so fast, I literally can't read them. Uh, <laughs> Uh, here's a, another good one from uh, Alicia4180. What is the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you on tour? We all have our own stories. Yeah, our fault. <laughs> your, your shoes getting tied together. Uh, mine, you... they get tied together. They just, I just step on both of my laces. What, oh. about, what about when Brandon broke that chick's face? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That was in the UK, right? Or no, yeah. was that in the... It was, it was like... UK. Yeah, it's UK. Yeah, Brandon accidentally hit, hit a girl in the face with his guitar, and he fell off stage and hit her with his head stock and guitar. Uh, and we, we felt so bad, we gave her a few free things from the merch table. Yeah, yeah. 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 She, a lot of blood. A lot of blood. <laughs> Just take some of those mesh shorts and like shove them in that gash on her head. Yeah, there it is, yeah. <laughs> Stop the bleeding for a minute. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Do some deals. So Warped Madness wants to know, how do you, I like, these questions are literally coming in so fast, I have to like <laughs> scroll down, like I have to hold it to even read them. Uh, how do you deal with people who say that you are too young to be a good band? Like you haven't been doing, uh, and, and I, I would like, to, I would like to hear the answer to that, like about other people in the industry that say that too, like that you, you know, aren't allowed to be successful yet. I, I mean, I feel like you, there's not like, I mean, that's like infants. There's not really like <laughs> age that we you like. You can't be talented. Yeah. I mean, baby rock. Baby rock. Baby metal. Ah. Baby metal. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying. Like, I mean, there's kids that are five years old that are talented. You no, know, but so there, but there are bands that are less accepting of up and coming people. Of course. Yeah. yeah. That's, that, that's that's what we've experienced. That we've experienced that yeah. plenty of times. You know, where people have been doing it. Certain bands have been doing it for five to eight years longer than we have. You know, they're way older. They've been played in tons of bands. This happens to be our first one together. You know, we're just you know, super lucky, but it, it happens and you know, you can, you know, the only way we, we deal with this is by trying to prove them wrong, you know, by you know, showing that we, we mean what we do and we, you know. It works smart, not hard. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a lot of young bands that come out and they fall apart after their first tour, their second tour, and I mean, these six dudes have been on how many tours with, with us so far and like, uh, we're not going anywhere. Yeah, it's chemistry. Yeah, how much how much time do you guys spend on the road? Like nine months or something like that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, la this, this, days a year. I was gonna say this last year we had probably eight weeks off total the entire year, like two months of solid. Whether it be like two weeks during Christmas and then a month off, like in between a certain you know tour. So you do a year like that, you grow up pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. Like, definitely. If you're not if you're not mature enough to do a tour, you that'll be known. It's not like you're you can't hide it for that for that long. Like. Someone in a band for a year, like you have no idea how much you can give up just in that year. And to be able to do it for two and a half years, like we're going to tolerate a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's, we went through this like embarrassing moment after embarrassing moment, like they were asking about hardship after hardship, but it just made us stronger and we're just ready for the next tour. Like something's going to go wrong. <laughs> Probably like 10 things are going to go Brandon's wrong. Brandon's going to hit another girl yeah. in the face without a doubt. <laughs> Like, well, we, that's why we're still <laughs> here. We, come, we go through those hardships, and that's kind of what we're teaching on this Warped Tour class. Is like a lot of these different things went wrong, and we've grown from that. And we've, we've had to fire crew members that we've loved as like best friends. We've had to like let banners go early on that, we, that were hard things to do, but we had to go through those things to get stronger. And a lot of bands 
would call at the end or would give up after that or try a little bit less hard and think they're not, we're not meant to do this because of this one hardship. But once you come overcome that, you're just, you're stronger and you're one step further towards your goal. Well, I will say that over the years, you know, I've been paying attention to this kind of music for a long time. Pretty much without exception, the bands who end up having careers are the ones that tour the most. And I think the reason for that is, I think there's two reasons for that. One is you make that personal connection with fans. And the second is that it separates people who are really committed from people who aren't because it's not easy. And if you guys are grinding it out nine months out of the year and still loving it, then uh, that says a lot. Yeah. Cool. Well, I think that, that about wraps it up for us. Uh, I would love to ask more of these questions, but you guys are typing them so fast, I literally can't read them. So thank you for that. They can come ask us every single question on Warped Tour. That's what we're there for. Yeah. Ask anything, like no matter if you're just starting out playing guitar with your best friend or if you've been in band for two years and looking how to put your press kit together or whatever, we'll tell you why you don't need a press kit two yeah. years ago. If you haven't like, got a lesson, book one. Yeah, just yeah. go to, go to uh, bandhappy.com slash warp tour to sign up uh, for uh, to uh, sign up for their class. Uh, also check out uh, our new music and audio Facebook for the Creative Live Music and Audio channel and uh, check back in August uh, for a class with uh, their boy Kurt Crummett. Oh, Chris Crummett, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> call him Kurt. I'm thinking of Kurt Ballou. You know, <laughs> Kurt, Chris, whatever. Uh, yeah, so check check back in August for Chris. So we'll see you then. Thanks. All right, guys. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.